there are actually three perspectives on matrix multiplication. And you're familiar with one of them called the columns perspective, where the columns of the result are the linear combinations of the columns of the matrix on the left, where the coefficients for those linear combinations come from the columns of the matrix on the right. So let's use this perspective, the columns perspective, to establish the first column of the result. So the first column of the result is the linear combination of these three columns with coefficients 1, 2, and 0. So it's 1 of the first column plus 2 of the second, which results in 3, 2, negative 1, and 3 again. And there you go. The first column of the result is established. Let's move on to the second column, but let's not establish the entire column. Let's focus on just one entry, this one. What will this one entry be? Well, it will be the linear combination of these three columns with coefficients 2, 0, and 1, but we only need to pay attention to the third entry of each column because we're interested in the third entry of the answer. So that value would be 2, excuse me, 2, still 2, still 2. So it's 2. And let's just point out that the only inputs that went into this number are these and these. All right. So because we were in the third row and second column, the entries that went into forming this value came from the third row of the matrix on the left and the second column of the matrix on the right. So as you can see, we can determine all of the entries in this matrix one at a time without doing it a column at a time. For example, this entry right here will involve the third column of the matrix on the right and the second row of the matrix on the left. And it will be 2, 0, 3. Okay? So that's how matrix multiplication works. It can actually be affected one entry at a time. And to determine a particular entry, you have to look at the corresponding row column in the matrix on the right and the corresponding row in the matrix on the left. And you have to perform this peculiar operation on those two elements of the matrices where you multiply those entries one by one and add together the results. So that operation actually has a name in linear algebra and it's called the dot product. And sometimes it is used as a verb. You dot two vectors. <laughs> dot product. And to use it as a verb you would say this entry well, it's a dot product of this column and this row. Or in other words, in order to obtain this entry, you have to dot this column with this row, which means finding the pairwise products of the entries and then adding together all of those products. So that's the dot product perspective on matrix multiplication. And the takeaway from this perspective is that you can determine the entries of the resulting matrix one at a time. And that's the advantage of the dot product perspective. If you only need to determine one or two or several entries in the resulting matrix, you should definitely use the dot product approach to matrix multiplication. Otherwise, you'll be doing a lot of the extraneous work you don't actually need to do. So that's the dot product perspective. And the dot product perspective actually leads to the row perspective. Here is the row perspective. According to the row perspective, you determine the rows of the resulting matrix one row at a time. And they come as linear combinations of the rows of the matrix on the right, where the coefficients come from the rows of the matrix on the left. So the columns perspective was all about columns. We had to say the word column three times. The column of the result is the linear combination of the columns of the matrix on the left where the coefficients come from the columns of the matrix on the right. And that would 
treating these one column at a time, give us the columns of the resulting matrix, one at a time. Row, the row perspective or the rows perspective is all about the rows. You have to say the word rows three times. The rows of the resulting matrix are the linear combinations of the rows of the matrix on the right, where the coefficients come from the rows of the matrix on the left. So let's get the last row. So he, in this perspective, you get rows one at a time. And this is actually so transparent and I would say obvious, even though it's a little bit involved and complex. The fact that this, is, that this works is actually pretty obvious. Like you can explain it to yourself. And I think the key to explaining it to yourself is the dot product perspective, where you realize that these individual entries that we will now calculate are correct according to the dot product perspective. Okay, so to get the last row of this matrix, we have to calculate a linear combination of the rows of this matrix, where the coefficients come from the fourth row of the matrix on the left. Let me use a different color. So we're going for the fourth row of the matrix on the left. That will give us the fourth row of the resulting matrix where we're considering the linear combinations of these rows. And for other rows of the resulting matrix, we would still be considering linear combinations of these rows. But now the coefficients will come from, let's say, the third row of the matrix on the left, and that will give us the third row of the answer. And then the second row of the matrix on the left, and that will give us the second row of the answer. And of course, that's moving backwards, but doesn't matter. Uh, so we'll get the fourth and the first. So for the fourth one, the coefficients are 1, 1, and 0, which means that we have to take 1 of the first row and 1 of the second. 1 of the first row and 1 of the second. And the result is 3, 2, 1. And the 3 is already here. Of course, it would be the same value, otherwise we'd have a problem. And as I said, 3, 2, 1. Now let's go for the first row of the matrix. Okay, it would be the same three rows, but now the coefficients will come from the first row of this matrix. And oh boy, they're complicated, so let me write them here. One, one, and three. All right, so we have three, five, four. Three is correct. Five, four. So now we're getting the resulting matrix one row at a time. So that's the row perspective on matrix multiplication. So to summarize, you have three perspectives. The columns perspective, which is the original perspective. The dot product perspective, which is what you would use when you need to get just a few entries, or if you're interested in the result one entry at a time. And then there is the rows perspective, which is also useful in many circumstances. So which perspective to use? depends on what your purpose is for multiplying two matrices, but actually also on the matrix, on the matrices themselves. I would say that if the matrix on the left has a lot of zeros, then perhaps it's easier to use the rows perspective because you would be calculating very sparse linear combinations. Sparse meaning most of the rows would drop out of the rows of the matrix on the right. And of course, there are other situations. So which perspective to use depends on the situation, the matrices themselves, or the mood you're in. But it's always nice to have several perspectives, and when it comes to matrix multiplication, we have three.